ہیلو اینڈ السلام علیکم میرا نام اعزاز سعید ہے اور اس وقت ہم موجود ہیں افغانستان کے وزیر خارجہ جناب حنیف اطمر کے ہمراہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دس ویژن دیٹ آور پیپل سبسکرائب ٹو اینڈ آور گورمنٹ ہیز اے ریسپانسبلٹی ٹو ورک ٹوارڈس اٹ اینڈ اینڈ دیٹ از اے ویژن آف این انڈیپینڈنٹ سافرین پیسفل اسٹیبل افغانستان وتھ ڈیموکریٹک انسٹیٹیوشنس اینڈ این انکلوسو گورننس وتھ good relations with all of our neighbors and the world community and Afghanistan that is not a place for regional and international rivalries but a place for uh, cooperation uh, in the best interest of all of us free from terrorism and drugs and built on uh, legitimate economic uh, interests Ali Fatmar sahab ye bataiye ke is sare mamle mein طالبان کلیم کرتے ہیں کہ انہوں نے ایک سو باسٹھ ڈسٹرکس کے اوپر قبلہ کر قبضہ کر لیا ہے آپ کیا کہتے ہیں کہ اس کی کیا وجہ ہے کیا آپ کی فورسز میں کیپیسٹی ہے کہ طالبان کو پیچھے دھکیل سکے ول فرسٹ آف آل دے آر میکنگ اے بگ مسٹیک Uh, living space. Um, we asked them uh, to honor their uh, Doha peace agreement obligations. We delivered on all of those obligations uh, in terms of departure of foreign troops, prisoners release, and negotiation in good faith. And they had a responsibility, a commitment based on, on that peace agreement uh, to Uh, cut ties with international terrorism, um, um, reach a ceasefire agreement with us, and negotiate for a political settlement. But instead of that, we've got this brutal, aggressive campaign from their side. Um, it's a very opportunistic behavior from their side because they said to all of us that their uh, war was for liberation of Afghanistan and the departure of foreign troops. Now that the, the foreign troops uh, have almost all gone, so why are they killing Afghan people, their own people? They've made a very bad mistake. This uh, campaign of brutality will be resisted and reversed Uh, by the Afghan people and government. Kya Afghanistan ki forces mein itni capacity hai ke wo Taliban ko piche dhakhel sakein aur Afghanistan ke andar mukammal amal la sakein? I strongly believe that we have the will, the resolve. We may have suffered from an imbalance in capabilities because of the departure of Uh, foreign troops and, and the close air support assets that any country needs. But uh, very soon, inshallah, we will be able to address that gap and to regroup our assets and resources uh, and to reverse the advances by the Taliban. Uh, do you think that uh, international forces Uh, particularly the America. Don't you think that America has deceived you? They left you when you were not having that much capacity and Americans left even the Bagram base without telling your local commander and all the weapons they were stolen by the Taliban. Don't you think that Americans have actually deceived you? Uh, well, let's look at the bigger picture. First of all, the Afghan people and government are grateful uh, for the solidarity uh, and support, especially over the past two decades, uh, provided by the United States, uh, Europe, 
uh, and our regional partners. Uh, this is something we have to honor and, and we have to acknowledge. Second is uh, that in good faith, the United States uh, signed a peace agreement with the Taliban. Now, uh, it's our common assessment that the United States, Afghanistan, and the rest of our NATO partners have um, honestly delivered on, uh, on those promises, but the Taliban have not. So the Taliban have betrayed the world community. This is the way we should look at it. First, Americans, they signed a unilateral agreement with the Taliban. Wasn't it an embarrassment for the government in Kabul? Um, there were two things that happened simultaneously. An agreement, peace agreement between the United States and Taliban and a joint uh, declaration uh, between US, NATO and, and the government of Afghanistan. So it was all, all for the same purpose, for peace, for negotiation with the Taliban uh, and for the departure of foreign troops, but also uh, expulsion of foreign fighters from Afghanistan. So we all worked in good faith and, and agreed on a legitimate uh, framework for that to happen. Uh, I don't think the Afghan government was embarrassed to support the peace process. Uh, Mr. Foreign Minister, there are two visible things which are emerging these days. One, uh, Taliban are uh, capturing all the weaponry which Americans are leaving, A. The B, uh, Taliban are claiming that military commanders of the government, they are also surrendering to them. So who is responsible for this? What's hap why this is happening? Um, I wouldn't generalize uh, in this situation. Uh, first of all, I have not seen any report that the Americans have left weapons for the Taliban to capture. Uh, second, I do understand uh, that uh, the situation has been quite difficult in, in remote districts of Afghanistan, uh, that because of the limited air assets that the National Security Forces of Afghanistan uh, command, uh, it was difficult to, to support um, our forces uh, in those remote areas. Uh, now, the Taliban um, took advantage of that situation uh, and, of course, launched this aggressive campaign. Uh, but those small tactical battlefield uh, advances would not count at the end of the day uh, for uh, the uh, fate of, of, of uh, Afghanistan and then the future. Uh, we have to be mindful of the fact uh, that uh, there hasn't been any uh, um, victory for anybody who tried to impose uh, their um, um, power uh, and their control over the people of Afghanistan. Neither foreigners nor Afghan themselves. There's only one way uh, for us uh, to win in Afghanistan, and that is winning the hearts and minds of the people of Afghanistan and not imposing by military means uh, a dictatorship. Panel Kwami or Mukami media ki assessment hai ke Taliban withdrawal ke che maa ke baad Kabul per kabza kar lenge. Aap kya kehte hai is baare mein? We disagree. We do not think this is an assessment uh, properly uh, researched uh, and supported by evidence. It is true that there uh, has been a campaign launched by Taliban with some advance, uh, advances in, uh, uh, in uh, rural areas of the country, uh, but uh, this is a, a lesson learned by the government uh, of Afghanistan and our national security forces. So we are 
uh, readjusting and adapting to the situation and we will be soon responding already that that response is underway uh, but we will be inshallah soon seeing uh, changes uh, on the battlefield وقت ہم موجود ہیں افغانستان کے وزیر خارجہ جناب حنیف اتمر کے ہمراہ وین یو سینگ دیٹ سون یو ول بی Uh, with uh, most of our international partners uh, for both security um, and uh, um, political and economic uh, cooperation. Uh, that is very true. Uh, at the moment, we are looking at uh, addressing the uh, challenge of uh, air capability. Uh, that is the critical element. Uh, we are looking at it. Uh, we are looking at many options. Uh, it would be uh, inappropriate for me to speak about details of it, uh, but that is the key element because uh, of the withdrawal of uh, assets uh, of US and NATO. Uh, there has been a gap created and we need to, um, uh, to fill that gap. Uh, second element is obviously to reassess Uh, the posture and the deployment of our forces. Uh, that is happening at the moment. Uh, Afghanistan will not shy away uh, to receive legitimate uh, assistance uh, in the defense of um, our common interests. Uh, Afghanistan is not fighting just for itself. Afghanistan is fighting for the security and stability of the region and the world community. That's why the entire region and the world community is concerned about the current Taliban uh, campaign and the fear uh, that this campaign uh, is actually um, um, bringing back foreign fighters uh, to Afghanistan. Yesterday, your defense minister had a meeting with the Indian, the Indian defense delegation and Indian uh, ambassador over here. Are you also approaching India for defense assistment, uh, assistance? Um, training of Afghan officers has been taking place in India. I'm not aware of any other type of assistance uh, um, requested as yet. Um, second, well, obviously in the past India did help us uh, with uh, uh, helicopters, Uh, maintenance and, and, and support, uh, those are all legitimate uh, elements that uh, we will need uh, for, um, as I said, uh, a common uh, interest of all of us, which is uh, to make sure that Afghanistan does not become a safe haven for international terrorism. پاکستان کو بڑے کنسرنز ہیں افغانستان کی سرزمین بھارت کی طرف سے اور را کی طرف سے استعمال کرنے کے حوالے سے آپ اس حوالے سے کیا یقین دلاتے ہیں کہ ایسا کبھی نہیں ہوگا ول فرسٹ آف آل اسپیشلی اوور دا پاسٹ سیون ایئرز دا گورمنٹ آف افغانستان ہیز بین ریچنگ آؤٹ ٹو پاکستان اینڈ Uh, assuring them that there will never be any state or non-state actor allowed by the government and people of Afghanistan to hurt Pakistani interests from our territories. We will never allow any state or non-state actor to harm Pakistan from our territories. But we have exactly the same expectation from Pakistan not to allow anybody to kill Afghan people or to harm Afghan interests 
from Pakistani territories. How Absolutely. much area of Afghanistan is under the control of Afghanistan government? Um, it is notoriously difficult to give any concrete figure uh, at this point, but all major population centers of Afghanistan are under the control of the government of Afghanistan, number one. Uh, maybe control is not the right word to use uh, uh, within the reach of the government of Afghanistan to deliver public goods, public services to its people. Uh, there are certain rural areas where the Taliban managed to disrupt the rule of law, security, and the provision of uh, public services to the population, and that is their responsibility. Ye bataye ki Taliban, TTP, Al Qaeda, aur jo baki tanzimi hai, inka apas mein kya taluk hai, aur ap kya samajte hain ki kya Taliban ke saath ye maujood hain, milke kam kar rahi hain, ya ye alag alag yahan par Afghanistan mein maujood hain. We have been honestly engaging our regional partners uh, as well as uh, our neighboring countries and the international community, uh, um, broadly speaking, um, about the, the threat of these foreign fighters in Afghanistan. We simply categorize them uh, into three groups. Uh, the group that has uh, uh, global uh, uh, objective, such as Al-Qaeda and Daesh. Second... Al-Qaeda and Daesh are present in Afghanistan, you say? Al-Qaeda and Daesh have been present in the region where Afghanistan and Pakistan uh, are actually located. Uh, so I wouldn't confine their presence to one particular country but I would certainly argue that they are uh, actually benefiting from um, their presence in the region. Uh, frankly speaking, uh, we know where leaders of Al-Qaeda were killed or arrested, uh, uh, both in Pakistan and in Afghanistan. Uh, so um, the presence of leadership uh, of these terrorist organizations is an indication as to where they are present or from where uh, they are trying to um, uh, launch their uh, military operation. So, so in your assessment, how, what is the number of Al-Qaeda activists who are here in Afghanistan? Uh, if I may give you a little bit yeah, uh, yeah. Of, of a bigger yeah. picture. As I said, Daesh and Al-Qaeda will be the category with global um, uh, objectives, uh, yes, terrorist plans. Then there are regional actors among these uh, uh, transnational networks of terror. Of them, that all of us should be concerned about, uh, I can name uh, TTP, Lashkar Taiba, the so-called Jaysh Muhammad the so-called Islamic movement of Uzbekistan, the ETIM, uh, Ansarullah, Jindullah. Uh, what is important about these networks, that they are not just a threat to Afghanistan, they're also a threat to Pakistan, to India, to China, Russia, Central Asia, to the entire region. That's why we are asking for regional collaboration uh, that's why we are emphasizing uh, a policy that there shouldn't be a distinction between good and bad uh, terrorist organizations. They're all terrorists and we have to have um, a common policy. And the policy that we are uh, emphasizing that would help both Afghanistan and the region is, number one, peace between the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan and Taliban. Uh, and number two, effective regional counterterrorism measures against these foreign elements. Because uh, peace between Afghanistan and Taliban would make sure that Afghanistan is not a safe haven for these elements. Uh, that's why it's important 
uh, that we are aware of the danger, the threat, and that we uh, uh, do not take a selective approach uh, in tackling this danger. وقت ہم موجود ہیں افغانستان کے وزیر خارجہ جناب حنیف اتمر کے ہمراہ وٹ ڈو یو تھنک وٹ از دا ریلیشن شپ آف افغان طالبان ود القاعدہ ود ٹی ٹی پی ود ای ٹی آئی ایم ود آئی ایم آئی ایم یو اینڈ ادرس آور اسسمنٹ از بیسکلی کنسسٹنٹ اینڈ کمپیٹیبل ود دی اسسمنٹ بائی the UN Security Council. If you look at uh, their periodic reporting, there has always been confirmation of the link and cooperation between Taliban and Al-Qaeda and Taliban and these other uh, regional uh, terrorist groups. So what's your personal assessment on uh, the relationship of uh, Taliban and TTP and Taliban and Al-Qaeda? We see it every day. It's absolutely there. Had it not been for the Taliban and their hosting and harboring of these elements, they would have never been able to uh, uh, find a foothold in, in, in Afghanistan. Uh, currently, as we speak, these elements are fighting uh, alongside the Taliban against our government and uh, our people in Badakhshan, in Kunduz, in uh, Faryab, in Badris, you name it. So you are saying that Al-Qaeda, TTP and other groups are fighting alongside the Taliban against the Afghan government? Absolutely, absolutely. This is not only confirmed by us as the government and people of Afghanistan, but also by the most credible uh, uh, and authorized body of the international community, i.e the monitoring mechanism of the UN Security Council. Afghanistan ki jo taza tarin surtihal hai, iske hawale se aap Pakistan ke kirdar ko kya dekhte hain? We do have very high expectations from Pakistan and we have appreciated uh, the work already undertaken in support of the peace process. But there are two things that are critically important in our conversation with uh, our Pakistani uh, counterparts. Uh, issue number one is that Afghanistan is in favor of uh, predictable, sound, and credible state-to-state -state relations between Afghanistan and Pakistan so that we um, respect each other and we uh, work with each other for our common interests. Uh, second issue is that it is our expectation from Pakistan to help with one disruption of the Taliban brutal campaign uh, and their lines of supply and support and second to bring them to the negotiating table. These issues we have been constantly focused on uh, and we are hoping that uh, we make some tangible progress on these issues so that trust is, is built and respect is uh, created uh, for our uh, collaboration. You were present in the meeting between President Ashraf Ghani and Pakistani military leadership uh, Army Chief General Kamar Bajwa was there and DJISI was there. And what are your specific demands which you have made to Pakistan in that particular uh, peace uh, step? I wasn't present at that particular meeting. I was on another mission out of country, but I was certainly briefed on it uh, and I was present at uh, the meeting that the leadership of the two countries had uh, during uh, Honorable Prime Minister Imran Khan's visit. Um, the two things that I 
uh, talked about. Um, one, state-to-state -state good relations, and second, peace and security for both of us. These are the two essential uh, issues we've talked about. Of course, both issues also entail our economic cooperation and prosperity. Uh, now, um, Afghanistan and Pakistan have a unique opportunity, even in the midst of this uh, crisis uh, and in the middle of uh, the Taliban's brutal campaign of terror. Uh, and that opportunity is to prove that they are determined uh, to work together. Uh, it, it cannot happen with rhetorical uh, um, assurances and, and promises. It must happen practically on the ground. We must see the disruption of the Taliban military campaign. We must see uh, good faith in Taliban in uh, uh, peace negotiation. Um, I also hear, we also often hear uh, the um, statement that uh, both sides will have to be committed to the peace process. And I would say uh, to all of them that you're absolutely right. Uh, but the argument I have is that I have been, the government of Afghanistan has been faithful uh, and honest uh, and, and remained committed to our peace-related um, promises. Look. Uh, we were not part of uh, the Doha Peace Agreement, but we honored, uh, uh, honored the every uh, commitment in, in that agreement, including the release of over 6,000 prisoners. So we are there in good faith, and I hope that we will see uh, some reciprocity. Taliban make a propaganda. They say that whenever they will attack Kabul, most of the government functionaries, they would leave Afghanistan and they would uh, live in exile abroad. Do you think that this, is, this has some kind of reality to it? Well, at the moment, all of their leaders are out of Afghanistan, living in other countries. We are living in our country. We are not attacking other countries. The Taliban from outside are attacking their own country. I mean, let's look at where the Taliban so-called political leadership is and between which countries they are uh, actually commuting. Who do you think suppo is supporting Taliban? Look, the question that the people of Afghanistan will ask is no longer who is supporting the Taliban because we've been talking about it over the past two decades. The question that we are asking now, who has the commitment to bring the Taliban to the negotiating table and uh, to make peace, genuine and lasting peace? And we have that expectation from Pakistan.